Hi folks. As some of you know, the snail is going to be doing another quality of life roadmap uh, for 2024. Um, they solicited for a bunch of us in the content creator program uh, to submit some early suggestions for quality of life improvements. Um, and I believe their intention is they're going to be opening that up to the wider community uh, sometime in the in the near or medium term. And this was an opportunity to submit some quality of life ideas and have them like directly seen um, by the folks at Gaijin who would be in a position to actually make the decisions on it without going through five levels of like forum moderation and curation and all that stuff, right? And the majority of the submissions that were sent in by other content creators were all of the regular stuff that you hear people talking about on Reddit and the forums and all that. A lot of really good suggestions. Um, people talking about, like, how to do BR decompression in a meaningful way. A lot of discussion about, like, tank armor in ground battles. That's kind of a hot topic right now with that whole spall liner drama and everything else. Um, a lot of discussion about aircraft, about uh, weapon selection how to streamline that, a lot of suggestions about, like, real shatter and gun damage and, and so on. Um, so I waited a couple of days before I submitted my my little write-up uh, because I didn't want to be redundant and duplicate things that other people had already talked about. And what I did is I abbreviated and resubmitted a number of suggestions I have for how to fix bombers. Now, as some of you will remember, if you've been on the channel for a long time, uh, almost two years ago, I submitted a fairly comprehensive, like, eight-page proposal to Gaijin on how to fix bombers in War Thunder's Air Battles game mode. And uh, it never really went anywhere. I didn't necessarily expect it to, but, you know, I gotta try, right? And uh, this is something that there's usually not a lot of attention on, um, and I want to talk about what I submitted and why I submitted it for a moment. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to ramble for a little bit while this wonderful uh, TU4 gameplay goes out in the background. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll probably realize that I'm not a whiner. I'm not one of those YouTubers who just, you know, constantly whines and complains about all the things I don't like and, oh, ghost shells are so bad and, it, you know, whatever. Um, when I actually mention things that I don't necessarily think are great about the game, I usually try and be constructive um, and include some ideas on how I think we could fix it, right? Like, back with the, the mid-year drama about six months ago with the player backlash and all that, you know, I, I covered that. I, I did a couple of videos discussing those topics, and I didn't just whine and complain about all the reasons that, you know, I'm unsatisfied with progression or whatever. I, I tried to submit and discuss some constructive ideas on how to actually fix the problems. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to discuss for a minute some of the problems with bomber gameplay, but please bear with me. I'm not just whining and bitching. I'm trying to set up the context for the suggestions that I submitted. So one of the first problems that we run into is a lack of targets. Now, if you've ever played bombers or strike aircraft, probably even if you haven't, I'm sure you're aware that there is intense competition for the four strategic bombing targets that appear on the map. And I'm, I'm going to kind of focus most of this um, for realistic battles, but a lot of these thoughts kind of could shift over into arcade battles as well, if, if that's your thing. Arcade battles, bombers don't have it quite as bad because you can bomb out the airfield to win the match. So most of this is going to stick to realistic battles, but... Anyway, the the lack of bombing targets is an issue. Um, frequently, you know, no matter how much you try and coordinate and ping your targets and do callouts, nobody cares because our player base is allergic to teamwork. So whoever's in the faster plane usually gets the base. That 
isn't great. That's a really bad way for matches to develop. And what it often means is, if you're in a slower aircraft, um, you are frequently left with a plane full of deadweight bombs and no bases, no targets to attack. So you have to kind of shift mid-mission um, and either wait the, what is it, five minutes for the bases to respawn, which is often not going to be viable because you're going to get shot down, um, or ditch your payload and try to do air combat, which for a lot of jets, a lot of props, a lot of bombers especially, isn't really going to be super viable either. Um, or shift to, to hitting AI ground targets. Now, sometimes that's okay, but in stuff like a high-altitude bomber, that's not really viable, because, you know, a lot of the targets move, right? And bomb drops from, like, 7,000 meters or, or, or even, like, 4,000 meters just aren't accurate enough to hit a lot of the ground targets. So, the lack of bombing targets is one of the major issues that I sort of identified here. Um... Another one, and this sort of this sort of rolls in with a few others, is the repetitive and tedious bomber gameplay cycle, right? Think about the player experience. You spawn into a bomber, you try and identify a target you can attack, you fly towards it. You probably monitor the map and the mini-map to see where your teammates are going and adjust your flight path accordingly to try and be heading towards a target that your teammates aren't also attacking. Because if you're in a bomber, you are 99% of the time going to be a lot slower than everybody else on your team. So you've got to kind of adjust to pick the leftovers. So you get to your target, and I'm, I'm assuming a best case scenario here. You get to your target, you drop your bombs, you blow it up. Maybe you're in a heavier, uh, a heavy enough bomber to attack a second target, you do that, you fly home, you land, you rinse, repeat. That's the gameplay loop right now for bombers. Um, it can be a little tedious because it's very repetitive. There's not a lot of, like, brain power involved. You know, you don't really have to do a lot. The main challenge ends up being picking a target, getting to it before your teammates blow it up, and getting to it before you're intercepted. Those those are the challenges um, for a bomber. That's where the the player interaction is. Um, it's not great. And if you get shot down, or like especially if somebody bombs a target out from under you, like after you've dropped your bombs, they swoop in at low altitude and blow it up. You know, it can feel like you've wasted 5, 10, 15 minutes and you come away from the match with a donut. Um, when you really made no mistakes beyond the mistake of spawning in a bomber in the first place. So that's really not great. Um, a lot of times the rewards aren't very good, so that's a problem. Now, this brings us to some of the suggestions that I sent on to the snail, and I'm just going to kind of go through them one at a time, and hopefully you'll understand as I'm discussing it how they relate to those problems I just identified. So, the first suggestion, and this kind of sets up a few of the others, is to make a distinction between strategic bombers and regular bombers. Um, things like the B-29 and Tu-4 could be reclassified as strategic bombers, um, with lower tier stuff like maybe the B-25 um, remaining as just regular bombers, right? Now... The idea here, again, uh, and another part of the angle as to why I submitted what I submitted, what these changes could be working towards, my goal with this, and I mentioned it in my post to the snail, is that the long-term objective not only is to increase quality of life for bomber players, but to set up War Thunder's air battles so that they could introduce things like the B-47, the Tu-16, the V-bombers, maybe even stuff like the Tu-22 and the Mirage 4 eventually, um, and actually have them fit and work inside of War Thunder's game modes. So adding a distinction um, 
and I'll get to why this distinction could matter in a, in a minute, but making the distinction between a regular bomber and a strategic bomber could include things like the B-47 and Tu-16 added later as strategic bombers, not just regular bombers. Um, and why those differences would matter, I'll get to in a minute. The next thing, of course, um, just additional bomb targets on all maps. That one's low-hanging fruit. If all they did was increase the number of bombing targets from four to six, that alone would be a huge quality of life improvement for, for bomber pilots. That alone would be huge. Um, so I gave that its own line item without any caveats. Now, the next one is to consider adding targets that can only be attacked by strategic bomber classified vehicles. Have strategic targets in addition to the regular bombing targets. This serves a couple of purposes. It reduces competition from strike fighters and even regular fighters and regular bombers um, for the various bombing targets. And it also gives the heavies, the strategic bombers, some unique and specific utility in a game objective that only a larger strategic bomber can complete. This would also allow, potentially, like the B-29 and the Tu-4 to go down a little bit in, our, in battle rating um, so that they could actually stand a chance against the aircraft that they're fighting because they wouldn't be able to win a match all by themselves. You know, right now, um, one, of the, one of the balance issues with heavy bombers, you can't add a B-47 into the game as it is right now, because one B-47 with its insane bomb load is going to go take out every base on the map and win the match all by themselves in one plane, assuming they're not intercepted. That's, that sucks for the people who aren't in the bombers. So adding strategic targets that are only attackable by these strategic bombers um, creates a way to kind of alleviate that problem in addition to giving the heavier bombers something specific to do. Uh, hopefully I, I explained that well. The next one is to add multiple spawn points for bombers, like at least four per side. Now the idea with this, and this, this gets into one of, the, one of the challenges with bomber gameplay, in that a lot of players who have you know, a good amount of experience with the game you can muscle memory in a flight profile to intercept bombers about 10 to 15 seconds before they drop their bombs on most maps in most BR brackets. You know, if you if you spawn into an interceptor aircraft or even a lot of runway fighters in like the super prop tier. It's and the, the reason you're able to do that and set up these absolutely flawless bomber intercepts is because it is a known data point exactly where the bombers spawn. That is information you have. And because there are only four targets, and there's one of them in particular, usually the leftmost target is the, the prime real estate for bombers to attack, not only do you know exactly where the bombers spawn at what altitude and roughly what their speed range is going to be, you know exactly where they're going that allows interception to be set up incredibly reliably. Adding multiple spawn points for bombers, especially if they were like, if they're at different altitudes by like 500 meters or so, um, it makes the job of intercepting the bombers a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting for the interceptors. And it also allows the bombers to have any chance in hell of avoiding interception. So that's the idea with the, the suggestion to add multiple spawn points in for the bombers to choose from. Now, this next one is a little weird because it would require a little bit of map rework, potentially. Um, but the next suggestion is to consider random or semi-random placement of the bombing targets. Or at the very least, like the strategic targets I mentioned a minute ago. Um, and again, this, this addresses the problems I, I just mentioned with the multiple spawn points, 
where if you know exactly where the bombers are going, setting, setting up intercepts is trivial. If the bombing targets are in random places, or semi-random, you know, like let's say there's 15, 16 potential spots on the map where a bombing target can appear, and then the bombing targets appear at a random set of them, like five seconds into the match, that adds a little bit of variety, both to the bombers and the interceptors. Um, and really, it, it just, you know, adds a little bit of actual variety to the bomber gameplay. Directly related to that is the next suggestion of adding in um, inactive versus active bombing targets. The idea is that the defenders would see all of the targets on the map. Like, let's say there are there are eight targets, right? Let's say they don't increase the count from from four targets to attack. So there are four bombing targets on the map. Well, the defenders see eight of them spread out all over the place. The attackers only see four. And which four the attackers see, the active targets, are random. And instead of having bases respawn, after the four active targets are destroyed, the inactive targets become active targets. Um, this, again, would add a little bit of guesswork and strategy for the interceptors to try and predict where the bombers might actually be going, rather than just immediately know every time. So, you know, again, the double objective there of making things a little bit more interesting and dynamic for the bombers and making things a little bit more interesting and dynamic for the people trying to intercept the bombers. So that's a quick rundown of what I submitted for, you know, the quality of life roadmap coming up in 2024. Now, I, I want to make a couple of things really clear, and I will know based on your comments whether or not you watched to this point. What I submitted with fixing quality of life for bombers isn't necessarily because I think this is the top priority. As I mentioned at the very beginning, a lot of the other content creators had already posted a lot of really good suggestions. I deliberately waited because I didn't want to duplicate what anyone else had already posted. A lot of the things other people have posted, such as BR decompression, a lot, of, a lot of the changes suggested for ground battles and spotting mechanics and everything else are very good, very important ideas that I agree with. What I chose to submit for fixing bombers is because it is a topic that is very often ignored or overlooked by folks in a position to, to make suggestions like this. So before you type some angry comment, you had one chance to say anything and you wasted it on bombers. No, I didn't waste it on bombers because other people had already submitted a lot of other ideas that were great, and I agree with a lot of them. So why am I going to say something a second, third, or fourth time if it's already been said? I would rather submit something that they had not seen that other people had not talked about. So that's why I submitted, you know, a proposal for fixing bombers rather than any of the hundred other topics um, I, I could have discussed. Now... This proposal also could have been a lot longer, um, but they asked us to make it short. You know, my my whole submission, um, this is a long video because I'm reading things aloud and I'm discussing a little bit more context, but my, my whole submission was just basically like two paragraphs, maybe three, depending on how you want to delineate it, right? Um, and I, I mentioned in the post that, you know, I realize a lot of these ideas for improving quality of life for bombers or structuring the game modes to add more bombers in the future are not going to be popular with a segment of the community. There are a lot of War Thunder players, and when I'm saying this, I'm not making any judgments, all right? Everybody plays the game and enjoys different stuff. That's fine. I want everybody to have a good time. There are a lot of War Thunder players, and especially an enormous number of content creators, I would say 95% of the other content creators, um, who have a mindset that bombers and attackers are just wasting a slot on the team, that the entire game should be focused on air-to-air -air combat and dogfights, 
and that's fine. You know, if that's your thing, that's fine. But it's not everybody. And, you know, I really hope that they give at least 30 seconds of thought on finding a way to add some more early jet era bombers into the game and have them be viable and not just dead on arrival. You know, like right now, if they were to add in a B-47, it would probably be at around BR-10 because of its bomb load and its, its speed and its capability to end a match by itself. At BR-10, a jet bomber is dead on arrival. It's missile bait. It's up against supersonic interceptors. Completely kaput from day one. Stands no chance of being successful in, you know, War Thunder's game modes. Um, and, like, if you were to take it into ground battles, it, you know, it's going to be up against, like, surface-to-air missile systems that are decades newer. So, uh, you know, can you imagine, like, a B-47 or, like, a Valiant going up against the Pantsir? I mean, come on. You know, zero survivability. Um, so my hope was is that these changes would not only allow some of those other heavy bombers to get added into the game, but to have them placed at a battle rating where they'd stand a chance and be appropriate, not be unbalancing and overpowered, but also not be unbalancing and just be gun bait. You know, to actually have a place in the game that works and and functions within the larger objectives of the air battles. So that's kind of why I submitted what I submitted. I know that a lot of these ideas are not going to be popular because we do have a lot of players in the War Thunder community who just want air-to-air -air combat. Um, you know, some people, even in the comment section on my videos, when I post a, re a review of a bomber, there's always one or two, like, really elitist borderline trolling kind of posts about how bombers are a waste of space and everything that's added to the game should serve no purpose other than to push and advance the air-to-air -air combat meta. You know, that's fine. I don't agree with that viewpoint, but, you know, if that's what people are into, that's okay. Um, and that's, by the way, what a lot of the other content creators are into. And I'm not passing any judgments or making criticisms. It's just a difference of opinion. So, when we had this opportunity to, to submit some quality of life stuff directly to like, you know, some of the core people at Gaijin, um, I wanted to submit something that nobody else was talking about. And here we are with bombers. Um, and I also threw uh, one last little bit of raw meat on the table. Um, I told them, you know, I would be happy to provide a more detailed write up again uh, with the diagrams and the map examples, etc. And uh, I'd even be able to work for free to help develop these changes. So offer me a job, I'll do it. Anyway, uh, I've been rambling for quite a long time. These were my suggestions on how to fix bombers in 2024. Uh, I hope this is some good food for thought. And I hope at least maybe some of this resonates with a few of you. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching.